Welcome again everyone, this is Shadi Abu Yusuf and today we're going to talk about the second skill of the TOEFL PBT, especially the structure and written expression section. Today we're going to talk about something that is very important. We're going to talk about objects of prepositions. Okay, now objects of prepositions. When we speak about prepositions, prepositions are like after is a preposition, we've got for is a preposition, we have in is a preposition, we've got by is a preposition, we've got on is a preposition, like all these are prepositions. Now when we speak about objects of prepositions, what do we mean by that? We mean by this nouns or pronouns that come after the prepositions. Now, for example, we can say something like after a long time. Now, this is a noun that comes after a preposition, so we call it an object of a preposition. When I say something like for my children, now this is a noun that comes after a preposition, so we call it an object of a preposition. Something like in Egypt. Egypt here is a noun that comes after a preposition, so we, so we call it uh, an object of a preposition. Sometimes we have a pronoun, like when I say with me. This is a pronoun. So, and this pronoun comes after a preposition, so it's an object of a preposition. This is the idea here. So this is what we mean by objects of prepositions. Now, how can, we, uh, how can this help us in the TOEFL test? How can questions come in the TOEFL test based on this skill or understanding this reality? Now, let me, let me show you something here. And I'm going to put a sentence on the board. Look at this one. With <coughs> John were hard. <coughs> now, when we look at this sentence here, with John work hard. Now, basically, we said in the skill number one in the TOEFL test that we need to find all the time in a sentence, we need a subject and verb. Now, we can see that there is a verb here, but when we look at John, the question is, is John a subject? Now, the answer easily, no, John is not a subject. For one reason, because it is preceded by a preposition. This preposition makes John an object, not a subject. So the idea that we need to understand that whenever we have a noun or a pronoun after a preposition, this noun or pronoun can never be a subject. So this sentence is incorrect. Why? Because we have a missing subject here. We don't have a subject. So to make it correct, okay, we can say something like, with John, with John they work hard. That makes it correct. Now, let's take another example here. Something like, in Cairo, in Cairo looks nice. And the question is, in Cairo looks nice. The question here, is this sentence correct or incorrect? I would say, no, it is not correct. Why? Because we say that we don't have a subject. Someone might think that Cairo is a subject. Well, no, Cairo is not a subject. Why? Because it is preceded by a preposition, which means that Cairo is an object of a preposition. That leaves us with one verb, which is looks, a verb without a subject. Now, to make this sentence correct, we say, in Cairo, the market 
looks nice. In Cairo, the museum looks nice. In Cairo, the building looks nice. In Cairo, she looks nice. Whatever. But you need a subject to be put in here so that the sentence becomes correct. Now let's have a look at this slide. So, today we're talking about objects of prepositions. Let's move to these questions here. And we have an MCQ question. Okay, multiple choice one. With my manager, checked the new business plan. With my manager, checked the new business plan. Now, what I need to do is to focus on the subject and the verb. Do we have a verb? Yes, sure, we have a verb. Checked is a verb. Do we have a subject? Now, we need to look at this. My manager, is it a subject? No, it's not a subject. Why? Because it comes after a preposition, which means that we need a subject. Now, which one is the subject here? Has, this is a verb. It is not a subject. I, well, that could be a subject. Yesterday, no, this is not a subject. This is time. And finally, no, this is an adverb. It's not a subject. So, the only answer that I can choose here is B, which is I. So, I say, with my manager, I checked the new business plan. Well, that works. That works when I say I. This is the right answer here. Now, let's move to another question. And look at this. Correct or incorrect? After all those years in London is not that good. Is it a correct sentence or incorrect sentence? Now we need to focus on a skill that we learned today. We need to search for subject and verb. Do we have a verb? Yes, we do. We've got is and is is a verb. So we've got is here. Do we have a subject? Now, what about all those years? No, this cannot be a subject. Why? Because it comes after a preposition, and the preposition is after. Now, what about London? Can London be a subject here? We say, no, London can never be a subject. Why? Because it is preceded by a preposition, which is in. Which leaves us with no subject. So we've got no subject here. We've got only one verb. So in order to make this sentence correct, we need a subject. So we say, after all those years in London, I can say his English is not that good. I can add just one word that makes it correct here. His English is not that good. You see? Something like that. Now let's move to the second one, the second sentence here. For a long time, at this police station in Cairo, has been doing great. For a long time, at this police station in Cairo, has been doing great. Now the question is, correct or incorrect? Now I need to analyze this sentence in order to find out the answer. Do I have subject and verb? This is the main question here. Now. Well, we do have a verb, which is has been doing. That's a verb here. But do we have a subject? Now, let's have a look at a long time. A long time, is it a subject? Impossible. Why? Because it comes after four, and four is a preposition, so this can never be a subject. What about this police station? Why, it can never be a subject to, because it comes directly after at, and at is a preposition. Now, what about Cairo? Cairo can never be a subject too because it comes after an in, and in is a preposition. So, look at the trick here. We've got three prepositions followed by three objects, and the three objects can never be subjects. So, what we need in this sentence is a subject so that the sentence comes out correct. Now, where can we add the subject? We need to put it here before the verb. So, we can read it like that. For a long time, at this police station in Cairo, he has been doing great. Or the police officer has been doing great. So, we only need a subject here. So, finally, I can say that 
an object of a preposition can never be a subject. So we need to take care of this point very, very well. Thank you very much for watching this episode. And next time, inshallah, we're going to watch skill three. See you later. Have a good day. That was Shadi Abu Yusuf. Bye-bye for now. Assalamu alaikum.